you're out for an evening with a telescope for gazing or imaging, few things are more annoying than having dew condense on your optics. There are commercial devices available to help you combat this, but if you're on a budget and can solder, you can make your own for only a few dollars worth of materials. There are links to the materials you'll need in the video description. If you can split the costs with someone, you can get enough materials to build six dew heaters for less than $30. You might even have some of the materials around your house. First, you'll need some resistors. For this project, I used 16 3 ohm resistors, rated at 1 watt each. Next, you'll need some wire. I use 22 gauge wire, like the kind from old home telephone wiring. You'll want at least 5 or 6 feet. Then, you'll need duct tape or, if you'd rather, duct tape. You'll need about two and a half feet for each dew heater. A 10-foot roll can make four heaters. To hold the dew heater in place, you'll want self-adhesive Velcro. You can sew Velcro strips to the dew heater, but my sewing skills aren't that good. You'll need about six feet of speaker wire. You can use lamp cord or similar wire. It doesn't have to be heavy gauge because it won't carry much current. You'll need a 12 volt power supply rated at 500 milliamps or higher. The odds are good that you already have one in a drawer or a box. If not, you can probably pick one up for a couple dollars at a thrift store. Do not use a different power supply. If you use a higher voltage, you run the risk of burning up your heater. If you use a lower current rating, you run the risk of burning up your power supply. Finally, you'll want to get some shrink tubing to cover certain electrical connections. You can substitute electrical tape for this, but I find that, over time, electrical tape comes loose and can smear adhesive. Next, you'll need some tools. If you do electronics, you probably already have these. Use a 25 watt soldering iron designed for electronics. With that, use rosin core solder, also designed for electronics. Some solder has an acid core for doing plumbing. You don't want to use that for this project. Have a nice straight edge for measuring marks. Use a flexible measuring tape for getting the outer circumference of your telescope. Have some paper and a fine tip pen for making marks you'll use later in the construction of the heater. Of course, you'll need wire cutters. For stripping insulation from wires, you can use either a wire stripper or a hobby knife. Although it's not absolutely necessary, a third hand with alligator clips for holding wire can make this job a lot easier. You'll want some scissors for cutting tape and Velcro. So let's make a dew heater. Start by measuring the actual outside circumference of your scope where your optics are. In the case of my scope, that's 74 centimeters or 29 and 1 8 inches. I find the first number easier to work with, so I'll call it 740 millimeters. Next, divide that number by the number of resistors we're going to use. That gives me a result of about 46 millimeters. If you're using United States customary units, that's about 1 and 13 16 inches. On your paper, make two marks this far apart. This is the spacing for your resistors. Measure about one and a half inches or 40 millimeters of wire to strip. Cut that length to use for the next step. If your resistors have marks on both ends, like these do, it doesn't matter which way they're oriented. But if they have marks on only one end, make sure both resistors are oriented the same direction. 
Wrap the bare wire you prepared earlier fairly tightly around the leads of the resistors to connect them in a series. This will give you a good mechanical connection between the resistors and allow you to slide them to the correct spacing. Measure the spacing using the marks you made on the paper. Line up the color bands on your resistors, making sure to use the bands that are on the same ends. Solder the connection. When you solder, make sure to heat the wires to melt the solder into the connection. This will give you a better electrical connection. Clip off the excess wire so it won't poke through the tape on the final construction. After you've done this for all 16 resistors, solder a 3 foot length of your 22 gauge wire to either end of your resistor chain. You can wrap the leads of the wire and the resistor around one another in what's called a Western Union splice. This is a strong mechanical connection, which means you'll get a better electrical connection. Bend the wire so it runs parallel to the line of resistors. At the end, clip the wire so it's the same length as the line of resistors. Separate the strands of your speaker wire and strip about 3 quarters of an inch of insulation from the ends. Cut some shrink tubing long enough to cover the electrical joints. With the tubing kit I got, I cut each piece in half and each piece was just the right size. Again, you can use electrical tape for this step. Slide the tubing over the ends of the wires and solder one of these wires to the last resistor in the array. Clip off the excess wire, then slide the shrink tubing over the solder joint. Apply heat to the shrink tubing to fix it into place. The best way to do this is with a heat gun. I don't have one, so I have to resort to using a lighter. If you do this, be careful to keep the flame moving and far enough away from the tubing so it doesn't catch fire. Repeat this on the wire lead. To make this next part easier, I taped my resistor array to my kitchen counter with a couple small strips of electrical tape that held them in a fairly straight line. Measure out just enough duct tape that it will cover the array with about half an inch of tape left over on each end. Flip the tape over and apply it along the length of the array. Try to keep the center of the tape aligned with the resistors. Smooth the tape down so it will stick to the resistors. Peel the tape up from the counter, making sure the resistors come with it. Flip the tape again so it's sticky side up. Fold the tape over the resistors, first from one side, then the other, to envelope the resistors inside. When you finish, you'll have a flat strip that's the main body of your dew heater. Measure and cut about an inch and a half of Velcro. I found it was easier to cut both strips at the same time to get the same length. Separate them before applying them. Peel the backing from the Velcro, then apply it to the end that doesn't have wires. Apply it to the side that has the seam, which will be the inside of the loop that we're making. Apply the other piece of Velcro to the opposite end. Make sure the loop isn't twisted and the Velcro is on the correct side so when the heater is installed, it will lie flat against the surface of your telescope. The heater is now complete, but we'll need to attach a power supply. For this version of the project, I wired the power supply directly to the heater using methods I used earlier. I also put a larger piece of shrink tubing over the entire connection for more support and because I think it looks better. If you prefer to run your heater on a power supply that can plug and unplug, you can get a connector like this one. If you decide to run your heater from a battery pack, make sure that it can supply the same voltage and amperage as the power supply listed. To operate the heater, just wrap it in place around your scope as close as you can to the optics. Then plug it in. I find it works best if I use a combination of the heater and a dew shield. 
With that setup, even in the humid air of North Carolina, I've had imaging sessions that lasted six hours without a hint of condensation. This combination of resistors and power supply worked great for my 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. If you want to read more about making your own heater for a different size scope, there's a link for subscribers to my Patreon account. By becoming a patron, you can help make sure that content like that you just watched keeps coming. You'll also find exclusive offers and content just for my patrons. Patrons can also make suggestions for videos they'd like to see me do in the future. You'll find a link to my Patreon page and links to the materials used in this tutorial in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button below.